iron losses. This is where things get, get really fun and, and actually fairly difficult to measure, but we can start to estimate these. Um, so what is iron losses? Well, we'll break that down into two components. And the first one we'll look at is hysteresis. So turning a um, motor into a magnet requires energy. So if I have my AC sine wave down here, um, I have my flux density curve on the top and, and I have kind of this color coded pattern. So as we increase current, we're increasing the magnetization of our iron. As we, as that sine wave wanes off and comes back down to zero, we're decreasing the magnetization of our iron and this requires energy. And then the red is magnetizing negative, green is um, demagnetizing negative. And the area of this loop ends up becoming losses because there's energy required to turn the iron into the magnet, energy required to turn um, the magnet off. So losses have, happen every sine wave. The area of that loop is the loss. And this is really physical properties of, of the iron and the permeability of the iron. Fortunately, we have an equation. It's a little complex, um, but, but we can get that power loss of the iron um, with this equation here. And it's a function of a, a couple of material properties. So this diamond's hysteresis coefficient, this diamond's exponent, the volume of the, of the iron, the frequency of excitation, and then the flux density, which again, flux density could be estimated um, from, from voltages and currents. So, okay, this could be implemented. This, this isn't that hard to do. Um, it's just a matter of getting the right coefficients. So we can start to characterize that. We can start to understand those losses in the iron due to the fact that we have to magnetize and demagnetize it regularly. 